for brain food, brain enhancing supplements that help improve neurocognition. And so basically smart supplements is what the industry will call nootropics. And when we think about preventing canine cognitive disorder, and when we think about old cat brain, old dog brain, there are some foods that can certainly, lots of foods that can be added in, but there's some supplements that you can begin thinking about. And if you have a senior, instituting them before you see symptoms is a good idea. All right. So jumping into kind of the first one, and this is actually one of my favorite ones, believe it or not. I've been administering this for a very long time, MCT oil. Now, holy smokes, the research around MCT oil right now, it's... I mean, it's every single, it seems like every single few months, there's a a paper that's coming out on this. And and there's a lot of research when it comes to the dog space and MCT oil. But do you want to explain quickly like what MCT oil is? So MCT oil, medium chain triglycerides are are a component in coconut oil. And... The beautiful ladies at Coco Therapy, you see that bottle there, have donated a bottle of MCTs for today's Inside Scoop episode. They're lovely ladies. They actually have been my clients in Chicago for 15 plus years. They, Their parents and grandparents have a coconut farm in the Philippines, so it's a family-owned business. And uh, coconut oil it can be refined and extracted and MCT oil come out of it. And Cocoa Therapy's MCT oil, they specifically make it for dogs and cats. Now you can certainly use human MCT oil, but MCT oil in general nourishes the brain in a way it provides fuel for the brain in a way that other types of foods don't. And so MCT oil is one of the things that we first learned about when we did dog cancer series and went to uh, Keto Pet Sanctuary. They did a ton of MCTs because it helps keep animals in ketosis, but it also literally provides provides brain food. The nice thing about MCT oil, and some people get nervous about MCTs because they they say, oh my gosh, it's just basically a source of extra healthy fat. Yes, it is, but it doesn't require the pancreas to secrete lipase. So there's no pancreatic stress. So for people that say, listen, I'm nervous about it creating pancreatitis, don't be nervous because lipase is not required. It's passively absorbed to the GI tract. However, Rodney, Talk a little bit about why you want to start slow on the dose in terms of uh, (laughs) uh, your your conversation with Dave Asprey. Yeah, we've had this conversation before. Mm -hmm. Biohacker Dave Asprey, who uh, makes the famous coffee Bulletproof, I know, uh, in in the western side of America, where they combine a little bit of coffee with some grass-fed butter and some MCT. Uh, Dave said it best, you can get disaster pants if you're not careful with this stuff, because Although it's derived from coconuts, I think the big thing that a lot of people think is, oh, this must be exactly like coconut oil. It looks like coconut oil. It's got a picture of a coconut on the bottle. So I'll just, as I use my normal coconut oil, where I'm using tablespoons of this stuff, you got to be careful there. I think, according to Dave, what was it every eight pounds of coconuts it takes to make one pound of MCT? Yes. So just remember, it is super, super condensed so you don't and and i read in the comment section somebody was afraid to use it because they said of uh the disaster with the digestive system so i mean start very slow you can see here where it says half a teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight on there Mm -hmm. man you could start even lower if if even if you've got a large dog start with a quarter of a teaspoon start with that you don't have to follow these exact dosages um and like you said the other and you've already addressed it the other issue of course is a lot of people are worried about pancreatitis because they hear fat so well done sort of hitting on that point now mct there was a couple of studies and i wish i wish i had the ability to publish them all here right one of the big studies that we know about was mct uh in the olden days that they gave to dogs with cognitive issues in combination with omega-3 fatty acids now we'll be talking about omega-3 further and also just a heads up inside scoopers a lot of these supplements can cross back and forth meaning they could go into a lot of categories but we would have had 400 slides if we had to keep bringing these up also you don't have to have a senior dog to be doing this either right like mct can be used in many many different assets of health and diseases i know there's also a lot of research right now dr becker when it comes to mct and seizures is there not yes and in fact mcts that's one of the things that has been put into some ultra processed foods you know for basically neuro care the problem with adding any supplement to ultra processed food is you have to think about dose, you have to think about stability, you have to think about quality. You know, are are the are the feed grade supplements uh, where you want to be in terms of absorption, digestion, sourcing, country of origin, all those questions that we have about a lot of the raw materials going in to ultra processed food. 
I'm not a fan of spending a ton of money on a prescription diet that has a little bit of MCT oil. I'm a huge fan of feeding a lower glycemic diet for seizuring animals, uh, uh, basically a very low to no carb diet and adding MCT oil. That to me is a, is a much more logical approach. And actually uh, standard of care for humans, especially pediatric epilepsy, MCT oil now a regularly recommended thing for helping to use food as medicine to decrease seizure potential. So absolutely happens with animals as well. So it's a nice addition. I just started Krasno on MCT oil, my ancient kitty, and I'm literally doing a drop. A drop. So I didn't start. He's really thin because he's old. He's less than 10 pounds. So I'm just putting a drop uh, on his raw food several times a day. No loose stools. But it, you do want to make sure that you start literally with drops if you have a small animal. So, and then you're watching bowels to make sure that you don't create loose poop. You know, one of the things, too, is that once you start to understand and think, think shout out to the people at Keto Pets that taught us this. Once you start to understand, uh, taught myself this, once you start to understand macronutrients, you understand, A, the benefits of MCT, but it's not just MCT, right? Like, I know Purina was very famous for that study that they came out with where they had a bag of ultra-processed food, they added MCT into it, and they saw a seizure reduction. So everybody went running to MCT and started pouring MCT on top of their right. regular diets. Maybe didn't see the effects of, like, seizure decline, let's say, or cognitive improvement. And that's because if you get into the research and the data behind, let's say, seizures as an example – it's the distribution of macronutrients, higher fat, lower protein, lower carbohydrates, different reaction in the body, different insulin response in the body, therefore an improvement when it comes to seizures. So it's not like taking chocolate cake, as our old friend Daniel would say, and pouring MCT on it, and my dog's never going to seizure again, because that, that would have, you know, that would give you an ill right. effect. But unbelievable for cognitive uh, performance, unbelievable for the brain, as you say, with ketones, and... And Dr. Becker, as you alluded to earlier,